Great looking typography is one of the most important parts of graphic design. With the artistic text tool and Infinity products, you'll be creating great looking typography in no time. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're gonna to be talking about the artistic text tool. This tool is available in Infinity Photo, Designer, and Publisher, so the content here will be relevant for all those programs. I'll be using Affinity Designer, but what I show you will be relevant for the entire Affinity Suite. Now this is one of two text tools, the other being the frame text tool. I'll have a video coming out on the frame text tool shortly, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. But today we'll be using the artistic text tool, and this is really useful for short phrases, titles, headlines, maybe a sentence at most. So to use this tool, I'll go over to my toolbar here, and I have this A here that's the artistic text tool. If I click and hold on it, you might see it as a T, that's the frame text tool. If you see that, just click and hold and select the artistic text tool. And now what I can do is I can click and drag to start placing my text. And I can hit escape when I'm done. Now like all objects in Infinity, the move tool will give me the basic operations here of transforming. So when I click on it, I can click on one of the corners to resize it. So by default, it keeps proportions. If you want to distort the proportions, you can hold shift. I can click this handle here to rotate it around. And also just by hovering outside the bounds of my box here, I can shear it to kind of give it a slanted feel there. Now the big question you're probably wondering is how do you change the font? Well, with your object selected here, you can change the fonts up here. Now if I click on this, I have all the different fonts installed on my system. And this is just basically going to be a list of the fonts on your system. You don't install fonts specifically for Affinity. It just picks up what's already on your computer. Now, whenever I get a new font and I install it, it shows up pretty much instantly here in the font list. If that doesn't happen for you, perhaps just try restarting Affinity Designer and see if it shows up then. But I'll select some other font here and you can see I can change it. Now you have all the common kind of font options up here that you expect, bold, italic, underline. However, sometimes some fonts don't actually have bold and underlined versions. For example, this font I just selected here, it actually doesn't have a bold version. However, Arial does. If I go to Arial, I can actually select the bold version. I can make it italic. But let me go back to that other font and I'll show you a trick here. So one thing you can do to kind of simulate boldness is to actually add a stroke to your text. And it's not exactly the same as bold, but it can actually look like it a little bit. So with my text selected, I selected the stroke here. I'll click the line and I can add an outline to it. If I make the outline black, it'll seem like it's bold. So this is one stylistic effect you can have, but I'll get rid of that for now. And of course we can change the base color of our font too. With it selected, I'll make sure the foreground is selected and I'll make it white here. Now technically within our artistic text object, we can have multiple fonts. So let me change the surf here. I'll change this to something. I have one I like called Sea Washed. Let's do that. Let's do bold. I'll change city to another one I like called uh, Tide Lines. So you can see within one object, I have two fonts here and that's possible. But usually if I'm doing something like this, I actually prefer to put it into two separate objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold Alt and copy this. And for my top one, I'm gonna delete the city part. And for my bottom one, I'm gonna delete the surf part. And if you're trying to format a couple different words and kind of a fancy logo or something, I do recommend breaking it up that way, especially if they're gonna be different fonts or have different properties. Now there are tons of text options in Affinity Designer and most of them are gonna be visible under the window text option here. You can see we have a lot of different options. So if you want to see all the glyphs in your font, you can check the glyph browser here. So this font, that Tidelines regular font, I can look through it and I can see what all the different letters look like and all the special symbols. Sometimes this is a good way of adding in a special symbol if you don't know how to do it with the keyboard. So maybe I want to add a copyright symbol here. I could double click on it to add a copyright symbol. Let's say there's some pound sign here. I don't have that on my keyboard. I can just double click the glyph here. So lots of cool options like that. If you scroll down, you can also see the ligatures here. Now ligatures are special graphics that are two characters together. And it's kind of a more convenient way of looking at them. It's a little more pleasing to the eye. So let me show you an example here. We have this FL here. Let's type uh, Florida. So I'll type Florida. And you can see this FL combination here matches the FL ligature. This is actually different than a normal F and a normal L after each other. Let me break this up. For example, if we just had an F and then after it, I just typed Florida. You can see the F and the L here together don't look that great. So that's just kind of a cool little detail, but in general, this glyph browser is really helpful for understanding what options you have in a font. Now we also have other character options. So I'll go to window, text, character, and we have all the common stuff you would expect. So I could click underline to underline it once. I could underline it twice. I can also do strike throughs here. Now down here we have our kerning and our tracking. 
So kerning is when you want to adjust the space between two letters and only two letters. So right now, nothing is happening. What I have to do is I have to select a space between two letters. So in city, let me select the space between the C and the I. Now at the kerning, I can click and drag the label and I can adjust that space between those two letters. So if I want to join the C and the I, I can drag it in here and it actually looks a little bit better. Now tracking is going to do spacing between all the letters. So with that selected, I can click and drag that and you can see it's adjusting the space between all the letters there. So it's a little easy to forget, but kerning is just between two letters and tracking is between all the letters in your word. And we have some other distortion options over here. Again, we have shearing, making it wider, making it taller. Down here in the typography section, we have some interesting combinations. You can make it all caps if you wanted. This example doesn't look that great, but it's an option there. And there's other options here that will depend on the font you have. And below there's more options for different languages and also kind of optical things to make the text look a little bit better. But that's kind of with the more advanced stuff. So let's get the color again with an object selected. I can change its color. I made it white before. Let's make it now some like hot pink or something like that. You can also do a gradient. So with the object selected, I'll select the gradient fill tool. And I'll just click and drag. Now I won't go into too much detail on how gradients work. You can check out my video on that if you wanna learn more. But for now, I'll just say is that with these two points here, I can click on one of them and I can change the color. You can see I can create a gradient through my text and I can make it go in different directions. And you can do the radial gradients and all the other options here if you like. But I like the pink. I'm just going to make it back to pink again. Now what we can also do is add effects to our text, such as drop shadows and glowing. And to do that, we use the FX option. So these apply to all objects in Affinity products. They don't just apply to text, but we'll use it for text in this example. So with my word surf here, I have it selected in the layer stack, as you can see. I'm going to click this button here that says FX. And I get this pop-up window here. Now, as I said, I wanted to add a drop shadow to it. That's called an outer shadow in Affinity, and that's this option down here. So I'll click the checkbox to enable it. And by default, you don't really see much because the settings are all turned down. Let me adjust them. And as I pull up the radius and the offset and the intensity, you can see the shadow starting to form. Let me toggle on and off. So it's on, that's before, this is after. And you can adjust it as you like. Now I'll close it. That panel just applied to this layer here. You can see there's that FX tab that's applying to my surf word here. If I want to modify it again, I can click on it and I can adjust the shadow again. If I want to turn it off, I can just uncheck it and that turns it off, but I'll leave it on. Now, maybe I want to do something with the word city too. Maybe I want to make it glow. So let's add an effects for that. So I'll click FX. And this is a different effects window. This isn't the same as the one for the surf. You can see there's no outer shadow selected. The one I want is outer glow, so I'll select that and be sure to click it. And I'll change the radius here. So I have a bit of a glow effect going there. I could change the color if I like, but I like just plain white. So I'll close it. So now you can see my city layer has an FX also there. So there we have some artistic text. We used a couple different fonts. We used some kerning and tracking. I also did a couple effects for drop shadows and glowing. Now, one other cool thing we can do with text is use warp filters to distort it and add perspective. So let me add some text here. Like I said, I'll split it into different words just so it's easier to work with. I'll change the font here. So I'll roughly position them to where I want them to be here. Now, what if I want to distort this text so it kind of bends around the wave a little bit? Well, what I can use in this case is a warp group, and that is this option down here. So with the word wave selected here, I'm going to click the warp group. And there's lots of different options here. The one I'll show for this video is called quad. And when I do that, we can see is it creates a warp group, which my text is inside of. So if I go and I click that warp group, I can actually drag the corners of it and change the shape here. Now, what's also interesting is that I can click in that bounding box here and I can add another point. So I'll click here and you can see I added another point here. So if I drag this point, it warps along that point also. Now, let me undo that. Sometimes it's a little tricky to click right in the right place. You don't click right on the line. You click just above the line and it adds it in. If you click too far above the line, it doesn't do anything. So that, that's a little tricky to do. But now that it's here, let me try to warp my word wave around this actual wave below it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the wave black just so it's easy to see. And this word here, I'm just going to change the transparency a little bit. So let me move the warp group down a little bit. Somewhere around there. Now with the node tool selected, I'll click the node on the warp group and I'll drag it up here. And I can kind of move these points around as I like. There's also these handles that can help uh, change the curve of it. I'll move it down here. 
And I like that. Let me put the transparency back to 100%. I do like the E in this position. I don't like how the wave is touching it. So let me double click on the wave. Maybe I'll just stretch this out a little bit here. Then I'll make it white again. Let's get everything back together. So now we've bent our text around this graphic here using a warp group. Now, one thing you have to be careful when you're using a warp group is sometimes you might click on your object and nothing happens. You have to click where your object was before you warped it. So if I click on the middle of the wave, you can see there's this bounding box here. So clicking inside the bounding box will select my text. But this edge of the W here, if I click off, if I click the edge of the W, it's not selecting it. So I have to click somewhere in the middle here, which is where my word originally was. It's a little bit of an odd thing, but it's just something that might trip you up a bit. Now the sibling of the artistic text tool is the frame text tool. And that's really useful for paragraphs of text. I'll be releasing a video about that tool very shortly. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you wanna see when that comes out. And of course, if you have any questions about the artistic text tool here, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.